Our first song this morning is Shout the Glad Tidings. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Rejoice exceedingly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy King comes to thee. He is just and saving afflicted and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the son of a she-donkey. Lord, thy word is a lamp to our feet, and a light to our path. Give us life, O Yahuwah, according to thy word. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. And we'll now say our recitation this morning, which is from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verse 37, about the Lord as our King. Pilate therefore says to him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, that I might bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Please be seated. Hear now from the word of the Lord, as it is written in the Gospel of Mark, a portion of chapter 11. And when they drew near unto Jerusalem, unto Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, 
Jesus sends out two of his disciples and says to them, Go into the village opposite you, and straightway going into it you shall find a colt tied on which no man has sat. Having loosed him, bring him. And if anyone say to you, Why are you doing this? Say ye that the Lord has need of him, and straightway he will send him there. And they went and found the colt tied at the door outside, where two ways met, and they loose him. And some of those who stood there said to them, What do you do, loosing the colt? And they said to them, As Jesus had commanded. And they let them go. And they led the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments in the way, and cut branches from the trees, and spread them in the way. And they who went before, and they who followed, cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Reading further from the word of the Lord, as it is written in the book of Revelation, in a portion of chapter 7. And as we read this part of Revelation, look for the similarities between this story and what we just read about Palm Sunday in the Gospel of Luke. After these things I saw, and behold, a crowd of many, which no one could number, of every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, arrayed with white robes and palms in their hands and crying out with a great voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four animals, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and strength be to our God, for ages of ages. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these who are arrayed in, ro in white robes? And whence came they? And I said to him, Lord, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they who come out of great affliction, and have washed their robes and whitened their robes in the blood of the Lamb. On this account they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne shall dwell in a tabernacle among them. They shall not hunger any more, neither shall they thirst any more, neither shall the sun fall on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall shepherd them, and shall guide them to living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Reading further from the word of the Lord as it is written in his second coming in the heavenly doctrine, first regarding the internal sense of the Palm Sunday story. By the disciples putting their garments on the donkey and her colt was represented that truths in the whole complex were submitted to the Lord as the highest judge and king. For the disciples represented the church of the Lord in respect to its truths and goods. And their garments represented the truths themselves. The like was represented by the multitude strewing their garments in the way, and also branches of trees. The reason why they strewed them in the way was that by a way is signified the truth, whereby the man of the church is led. The reason why they strewed branches of trees was that trees signified the perceptions and also the knowledges of truth and good. Consequently, the branches denote the truths themselves. This was done also in conformity with a customary rite. For when the highest judges and kings rode in their solemn procession, the princes of the people then put their garments on the donkeys and mules, and the people themselves strewed their garments on the way or in their place, the branches of trees. Reading further regarding the correspondence of garments generally. That garments signify the things that are in the natural man, which are knowledges, true or false, or cognitions, is from the spiritual world. 
For in the spiritual world, all, however many, appear clothed according to their moral life. Consequently, those who have lived a moral life from a spiritual origin appear clothed in shining white garments like fine linen. And finally, regarding the internal sense of the story from Revelation that we read. To be clothed with white robes signifies to have communication and conjunction with the heavens. To hold palms in their hands signifies confession from divine truth, because palms signify divine truths. For every tree signifies something of the church, and palms signify the divine truth in ultimates, which is the divine truth of the sense of the letter of the word. Here end our readings. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. The Palm Sunday story that we read in the Gospel of Mark and the story of the multitude of angels that we read about in the book of Revelation show us something amazing. This morning, we're going to see how if we do what it says in the Gospel of Mark, we will be angels as described in the book of Revelation. When we welcome the Lord, like they did as he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the Lord will then be able to wipe away every tear from our eyes, as he did for the angels in the book of Revelation. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus sent out two of his disciples to get a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples took the colt, and then they took their garments, their outer garments, and they placed their garments upon the colt. And then the Lord rode that colt into Jerusalem, and as he rode into Jerusalem, more people took their garments and then put them down along the way before the Lord riding into Jerusalem. And then they also took palm branches. And as well as with the garments, they took the palm branches and placed them down before the Lord riding into Jerusalem. And as the Lord rode into Jerusalem on the colt, the people who were watching the Lord ride in along the way were calling out, saying, Hosanna, which means Savior or save us. And here in the church this morning, we have garments and palm branches and the word. And we can picture the Lord on the colt where the word is, riding into Jerusalem along the garments and palm branches that were laid down before him. And as we think about this image in the Palm Sunday story with the help of what we have here in the church, we can keep it in mind as we also think about the image in the book of Revelation that we read about. In Revelation, the Lord is again seen as a king, but now in the form of a lamb on a throne, surrounded by multitudes of angels in white garments, holding up their palms in their hands. And they were saying to the Lord, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to our God for ages and ages. Amen. Then it says in the end of this story in Revelation, For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall shepherd them and shall guide them to living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes." Now looking at the correspondences of these two stories will help us see what we need to do to be like these angels rejoicing in heaven as we read about in the book of Revelation. They got there because they first put their garments and palm branches down before the Lord. They got there because they submitted the truths that they knew from the Word to the Lord. The garments and palm branches of the Palm Sunday story are the truths that we know that we can submit to the Lord too. They are the truths that we learn from the Word that we can place down like garments before the Lord. like the garments and the palm branches of the Palm Sunday story, before the Lord riding into Jerusalem. 
When we learn something from the sacred scripture and the heavenly doctrine and lay it down before the Lord, we're asking him to show us how we can live it from him. Laying down our garments that we have now, the truths that we know right now, before the Lord will mean that he can then give us the shining white robes of heaven. When we learn something from the word and then live it as a matter of religion, we have laid it down before the Lord. It says in the heavenly doctrine regarding the garments that those who have lived a moral life from a spiritual origin appear clothed in shining white garments like fine linen. And now when we look at the palm branches in this story about the Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we can see that laying down our palm branches now will enable us to hold those same palm branches in our hands, thanking the Lord like the angels in Revelation. For the Lord teaches us in the heavenly doctrine that to hold palms in their hands signifies confession from divine truth concerning the Lord. If we humbly place the truth in our minds before the Lord, he will, we will then praise him from those very same truths as he leads us along the way of living them. So let's talk this morning about what it means to actually do this. To actually lay down truth before the Lord. What does it mean to take our garments and branches and lay them down before the Lord? Well, here's a tough one that we can lay down before the Lord, especially in the times that we're in now. How about laying down the truth before the Lord that providence is in the very least of things? The Lord teaches us in New Jerusalem and her heavenly doctrine that the divine providence of the Lord extends to the most minute things of a man's life. So even the hardest things we experience are things that the Lord can lead us through for good. This is a hard one to lay down before the Lord, especially right now, isn't it? Many people throughout the whole world are going through some pretty difficult times right now. Experiencing illness, losing their jobs, and worrying for their loved ones. But if we don't lay this truth that providence guides all things down before the Lord, we will not be able to use it to walk in the way of religion. The Lord will not be able to use it to help us if we don't lay it down before him. But if we do lay this truth down before him, if we do say, Lord, I know it is true. Help me see how to live it as a matter of religion, of life. He will show us the way. He will show us how to use it to respond to what we are experiencing right now and respond from him, not from ourselves. Respond by looking for the Lord to lead us to do good. Even now, even in these difficult times, rather than responding by rejecting him and heading toward evil. Laying down this truth that providence guides all things before him will help us see his guiding hand of providence as he leads us to still love one another, maybe in ways we've never even seen before, rather than seeing these times as an opportunity for hatred and hurting others. If we can submit this truth to the Lord that his providence guides all things, he will show us how it is true. He will show us the good that we can do today. He will show us the good that others are doing all over. He will show us the good that will lead us to say, yes, he is in the least of things with his providence. How else could there possibly be any good at all in times like this, if not for the Lord's guiding hand of providence. Now here's the real clincher. 
when we truly see the Lord guiding us with the truth that we have laid down before him, we will want to declare it. When we can see his providence in the least of things, even in the hardest of times leading us to good, we will hold up that palm branch and celebrate his presence as he wipes away the tears of struggle. We will rejoice like those angels in Revelation. Hosanna, our Savior, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to our God for ages and ages. Amen. Please rise for our next hymn. <clears throat> and our next hymn is Lo, they come in glad procession. Let us pray. Lord, our King, Hosanna, our Savior, Thou art just and saving, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to Thee for ages of ages. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Please rise for the closing of the word. Our last song this morning is All Glory, Praise, and Honor. Happy Palm Sunday.